Hello guys, I'm Sandeep. I'm a physics faculty at iTunes. And uh, today we are going to uh, see the fourth session of the light, right? So if you do remember, we have completed the lot of portion about the light. We know how the light uh, travels. We know how we can see the objects, right? What we need is we need the eyes, obviously, and the light is also important. Can we see the light? No, we cannot see the light, right? Light, actually, we can see the objects which are reflecting the light. Okay? Then we see, have seen some transparent objects, then translucent objects, and the opaque objects, all those things also, right? So, you know that uh, objects which block the light, we can say, which blocks the light are called as opaque objects, and uh, which passes, which let the light pass, those are the transparent, right? In translucent, we can say somewhere between them, right? Some light will be passed, some will be blocked, like that. Then we also seen the mirrors, plane mirror and uh, the reflection will be there. Then we now, plane mirror is not a big thing, right? We daily see the plane mirror, that's so simple, right? Now, the spherical mirrors, we also talked about the spherical mirrors and what are the uses of that. And more importantly, the formula magnification image positions, if we have the, if we keep the objects at the different places, what will be the image positions and etc. Right, we have also completed all those parts, right? Then uh, sources of the light, which are the luminous objects, which are our normal, non-luminous object we can say, right? So which is the biggest source of the light we have? Obviously that is our sun we can say, right? Okay, so um, we have also seen that this about the specs, how the specs uh, work, right? It uh, it has some lenses, right? So no, they also let the pass. They also let light to pass, but there is, they have some properties. That's why we do see the objects more clearly when we wear the specs. Okay? Why this is happening right now? Today, today, what we are going to do. We are going to study about the human eyes and uh, obviously why we need the specs sometimes, why some people need the specs and uh, why some can see the uh, objects without the spectacles, right? We are going to see those things, right? So before moving to the part, um, today we are going to do one, uh, some small activity I want you guys to do, right? We want to prepare our own kaleidoscope. Right. So what is kaleidoscope? Yes, do anybody know what is the kaleidoscope? It is a very toy instrument, you can say, right? Toy instrument, if you look, uh, it is something like cylindrical, you can say cylindrical toy, right? There is one side through which you can see inside of that, right? Once you see that, you will see the very good designs or patterns there. It is called as kaleidoscope. And how to prepare that one? Okay, so we, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to study how to prepare that kaleidoscope. So, what we are going to do, we are going to take uh, plane mirrors, right? So, this is the cylinder actually. And we want to prepare the kaleidoscope like this. So, let's take three plane mirrors, consider. Right, so I have taken these three plane mirrors. Right, plane mirrors we know that they do not distort the images, right, or do not magnify it or make it smaller. What I'm going to do place the plane mirrors like this. Right, so this is the first plane mirror I'm keeping on this. Keep the second mirror like this. And keep the third mirror like this. So you can see, right, what I have done, what I have created here, it's a little bit of, we can call this as prism, right? You can call this as prism, right? So the reflecting part should be inside, we can say. Reflecting part should be inside that prism. Okay, so this is non-reflecting part. Silver, we know, right? We have to silver those. 
Then after that, what we are going to do? Just take a small can, cylindrical can like this, and put this whole thing inside that, right? Inside the cylinder, you can say, right? So it will look something like this prism we have kept inside mm, this part, okay? In this in that cylinder, okay. So how we are going to get the kaleidoscope as again, uh, let me repeat that the kaleidoscope means what? When we watch through one of the end, we are going to see the, see the beautiful color, beautiful designs there actually, right? So how to do that? Now this is the prism inside of that prism will be the reflecting part that we know. Okay, so what we are going to do now, fix this one edge, fix the one edge of this kaleidoscope uh, let's say buy some paper or durable material rather than paper, use some cardboard or etc. like that. And keep one small hole on that, right? Keep one small hole, why? Because we need to look through that, no? That's right, okay. Now at the end of the other end, this is the, let me increase a little bit size of that. Okay. So consider the cylinder is like this. What we are going to do on the other end, put one circular mirror like this, plain mirror again, right? With the reflecting part here like this. And there is some gap, you can see some gap, right? In this gap is the, what we are going to do, we are going to put some very small glass materials, right? Colorful glass materials, we can say, right? Glass pieces, right? You can keep the broken parts of the bangles, right? Bangles are the glass materials of the different colors, different shapes, right? Different colors, different shapes, like that, okay? Put all those material inside this part. And again, plain mirror is there. Then again, uh, put some cardboard on this side also. So we can fix that part too. Okay, so this is your kaleidoscope, it's ready. Now what is happening in that kaleidoscope? As I said, kaleidoscope is the toy, which is going to show you different patterns, different colors, different designs there. So when you are going to look from this part, okay, look from this part, what is going to happen? That you are going to see some patterns there, right? Okay, so different this, uh, different color glasses are going to show some uh, reflections, multiple reflections will be there in the mirror and uh, you will get, the, get to see the very cool pattern there. So this is how you can prepare your own kaleidoscope, okay? Okay, so this is the, one of the applications you can say of the plain mirror, okay? Then. So now let's see what we are going to cover today. So today, you're going to cover the dispersion of light. Dispersion of light means you are very well known about this fact that is dispersion of light. Dispersion means to getting separated, right? Simple meaning we can say separate, separating something, right? So can I say separating light? How we can separate the light? light. Now we know that light is made up of how many colors? That's right, seven different colors, right? Which are those colors? Rainbow colors, right? So those are the rainbow colors, seven colors, which are the colors? First one is violet, orange, blue, green, yellow, then uh, indigo is there and red is there, right? So there are these uh, different seven colors we can say, okay? okay. So um, this is the dispersion of light. And we have seen this dispersion in the, in case of rainbows, right? So in which season we do, do we see the rainbows in summer or winter? Neither, right? In rainy seasons, we can see some rainbows, right? Very nice pattern. Uh, most probably it is a semicircular like this, right? So rainbows are normally semicircular. Why those are not circular? So you can see the circular rainbows, but from where, right? Consider you are in flight, in plane, then only you can see some, uh, circular rainbows, right? Those rainbows will be completed like this. So you need to go up to some height we can say, right? Plane is going to provide you some height and now, uh, yes, we can see that will be the circular rainbow, okay? 
So we'll see that, right? Then we are also going to study, yeah, see how we can create our own rainbow, right? How to create the dispersion of light. Okay. Then the uh, second part we are going to study is human eye, right? So how the human eye works, how we can actually see the objects. We already know that part that light is doing its part and we know how the light is playing the part in the vision, right? So light is uh, getting obstructed by, we can say an object and that object reflects that right towards our eyes, that light towards our eyes, right? And then we get the vision. But what is happening in the human eye? That is the important thing. Then now uh, the structure, so structure of human eye, you are going to see, right? And uh, then, then we will also see the defects of the vision. Defects of the vision means what? Why we have to mm, wear the spectacles. That is the defect of the vision, defect of the human eye. That's a very common thing nowadays, right? Most of the people now have the spectacles, especially after, oh, we can say 20 or 30, right? Each. Okay, so what are those defects and how to cure those? How to cure means obviously we have to use some specs, right? Then, okay, so let's start. So dispersion of light, as we know, rainbow is the one thing uh, which gives us the dispersion, seven colors. So, how to get our own dispersion? There is one material called that prism. Prism is again the glass material, right? Uh, if you do remember, we have in to prepare the kaleidoscope, what we did, we attached three different parts, we can say three different um, plain glasses to get the prism also too. That is, we can call that also as prism. This is also a prism. How to create prism? Again, what you can do instead of plain mirror, now just use our small um, glasses like this, right? You can use a plain glass, right? So what I can say, there are three parts, right? It's very similar to our mirror case in the telescope. So this is called as the prism actually. And from the front side, you can see the triangular portion like this. Right? So on this prism, if you incident our White light, white light means where we are going to get white light. That is our normal light. Our sunlight is also white light, right? So this is not right now. Yeah. So from the other side, you can see in this diagram that white light, single ray, monochromatic light, uh, not monochromatic actually, white light we have to use. We are getting, uh, that light is getting dispersed into this seven colors, which are obviously same as the uh, pure also, right? We can, so we can say those are, the pure colors, seven different colors and sequence also you can see sequence are also same that tips that of our rainbow. Okay. So to disperse this light, what you are going to need? You are going to need a prism, right? But now consider if you don't have the prism, but we need to find, uh, we have to separate this light into seven different colors. What we can do, right? Very simple. We can do this small experiment at our home also, right? You can see, yeah, this is the small uh, experiment you can do. Right? Take one bowl, right? Small bowl and fill the water in that bowl. Then, so consider this is our bowl. bowl. Right? Then put one plane mirror. We have the plane mirror at home, right? Put the, take the small mirror and put it like this, okay? And put this whole bowel mirror system in front of the window. Uh, you can see the window in the uh, afternoon's time. Most of the time the sun uh, sunlight comes through the window like this. You can even see that so shadow, so not shadow we can see, but the sunlight portion there like this, right? On our walls also. Okay. So you can keep that this whole bowel thing, bowel and mirror system going to mm, that sunlight. Okay. Okay. Then put the white paper or cardboard we can say on the opposite wall. Right. If you uh, put that wall there, then you are going to get the colors, seven different colors, right? Why it is happening is that because this water also has some property. 
right? Water has some refractive index, not only water, all the different uh, materials like glass also, glass also have some property. This water also have property that is refractive index, right? That refractive index property is going to segregate that sunlight into different colors like those all seven colors we can say, okay? So this is the basic of uh, that part, you can say, simple. So this is how you can create your own rainbow at the home, okay? So now let's move to the next part. Yes. So next part is human eye. How many eyes we have? Right? Two eyes we have, right? Okay. So those eyes, now I don't think we need to introduce this concept. I everybody know I, right? I see it in the cavities called as orbits in the skull. Right? So in our skull, that is the bony head, we can say, right? There is a cavity, and in that cavity, there is a uh, eyes we can put those eyes right so I can you say that is a little bit of circular type something okay so this is the cavity or uh, you can say and in that cavity eyes is perfectly fixed okay. then remember this part which could be asked uh, they could ask you in the exam also six extra ocular muscles controls the eyes movement right so you can uh, move your eyes right if, anywhere if you want to see let's say at this direction you will uh, move your not only head you can also keep your head straight and move the eyes right that's not a big deal so almost you can cover almost uh, can i say 180 degrees towards around yourself yes if you want to see back side then obviously you have to turn your head right we don't have the eyes on the back side of the head right okay <laughs> so now let's study about the, this eye and what are the different parts are there so what we can see Front visible part of the eye is made up of cornea, right? Colored, uh, this is called as iris, right? Or iris. And third one is the pupil, okay? So these are the three parts we can actually see of our eye, right? You can observe in that uh, in mirror also. Okay, so let's uh, see this picture uh, diagram there. Okay, so this is the human eye. What are the different parts of the human eye are there? So at the start, we have some cornea. So this is the cornea part, right? Which is actually, we can say, uh, which has uh, some this protective material, we can say, right? So to protect the lens, this is actually, uh, this is the lens inside the eye, right? To so, uh, protect that lens because of accidents, right? So that cornea is a hard material, hard type material, you can say, right? Then there is iris, right? So this iris means what, right? Uh, sometimes you can say that uh, some people have the, let's say, green eyes or some have the blue eyes, right? That iris has that color, right? That blue or green. So that iris is going to define the color of your eyes, right? Most of the time we have the black eyes. So obviously our iris is a black, we can see. Then there is some small opening between the eyes, we can see. That small opening is actually called as pupil. So it is the light is going to pass through that pupil, right? And after that pupil, we have the lens. This lens is nothing but it is, we can say it is just uh, similar to lenses we have studied, right? That lenses, what the lenses do? Lenses uh, change the size of the objects, right? So obviously size of this cycle, this object is very huge, right? So how to, how the, this lens can uh, see that object? Obviously we have to make the smaller part of that cycle, right? Like this here you can see, right? Here, this lens is making the inverted object, right? What I can see in this diagram is, if you look at very closely, this there is a small image that I have shown, right? That cycles image is inverted. So do we see the inverted object, inverted cycle? No. Okay. Then who is going to process? Obviously, this is optic nerve, and optic nerve is connected to brain, obviously. So brain processes that image, obviously. So make it invert again, make it upright again, right? Like that. 
so as we were saying the light from the object right not from object obviously cannot produce light but there must be some source some light and because of that this light will go here and then this light will get reflected right we know that part but so just for the sake of understanding now consider the light from the object is now coming towards the lens and what is the job of lens to create the image where it will create the image on the retina so this back portion of our eye is nothing but the retina okay on that retina lens focuses the image simple okay so sometimes when we say there is a defect we need the specs why need the why we need the specs if this lens is unable to focus this image right or project this image on the retina then we can say yes then uh, there is something defect there will be some defect how that defect will occur we will going to see that in the next upcoming slides so that's not big deal okay so as i was saying what are the parts cornea is there iris is there pupil is there lens is there and uh, lens is what is the job of cornea to protect the lens of the eye what is the job of iris that will create some smoothness of between the you can say cornea and your lens right pupil is what pupil is that small opening in the iris who pupil is the one who is actually going to collect all the light from the object and then we have the lens what is the job of lens to project the image onto the screen screen means who, who is the screen of our eye that is our retina right okay and these are the eye muscles right oh, movement for the movement we can say right okay there are six types of muscles we already seen so these eye muscles can help us for the movement of the eye then uh, this retina once we got the image on this retina what is going to happen optic nerve is connected to retina towards our brain and right so brain looks something like this i guess right so so you must have seen the brain lot of times right very dangerous diagram that's the brain so this optic nerve is going to send signals towards the brain right and uh, then we are going to get the sensation of the image right okay then now remember there is one spot called as a blind spot right there is one spot or near to the optic nerve somewhere where if the lens project the image onto that blind spot remember this blind spot is for everyone i am not saying about the blind people right for every human eye everybody can experience this right there is one blind spot uh, near the place of the optic nerve where if the lens project the image there we cannot see the or see any object there right so for this to try this one you can do a very small experiment take this one page mark the cross on the page right and take that paper in front of you right consider this is the paper right put the cross on that paper and oh, mark the cross like that okay so once you mark that cross and take it at some distance take it closer 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 at some particular distance that x is going to disappear at some particular distance that x is going to disappear right and when it disappears actually that means that x uh, the image of that x comes to the blind spot blind spot is near to optic nerve we can say right so this is about the blind spot we can say okay then one more thing we should know about this uh, eyes is that uh, if this lens create some image right we know that part lens create some image uh, on to the retina right that image remains on the retina for 1/16th of the time right very small time right 1/16th of the time but believe me it's uh, enough for our eye right so what i'm saying that uh, the image produced by the lens 
on the retina is retained on the retina for 1/16th of the second means even if you move your eyes that image will remain on there for the 1/16th of the second this is the principle used in your movies right so what are the movies movies are nothing but the continuous flow of the pictures you can say in the previous days uh, in theaters there uh, there must uh, there was very big curve film was the reel was there and film was there film means that film is something like this right nowadays we don't need any film right but in previous days old days even for the photos we need we needed that film right some companies like kodak used to sell uh, those film and those cameras over there right nowadays even the dslr cameras also work on the digital right we have that memory card we store all the photos there but initially there was uh, there used to be a one film like this and all the photos whatever photo we click on the camera right those photos used to get here right so then we have to develop those photos then we get the soft copy sorry hard copy of those photos right etc the movies also work the same thing so there is a big reel which of this film right which is bounded on this reel we can say and the projector in the theater used to rotate that film right so what you are actually seeing you are not watching the movie you are just watching the uh, uh, images right but those images are faster than this one so those images used to move faster than 1 by 16 actually uh, those are in we can say 1 by 24 second so we get the second image in 1 by 24 second right so simple what you can see here consider let me zoom this one consider these are the two images right which our projector is giving so this is the one image and this is the second image right that reel is going to rotate so obviously we are going to see this image first and in 1/14 1 upon 24th second very small right so half of the second we are going to uh, they are showing us the second image okay right? our retina has the first image for the 1 by 16 second right so consider this is our hero somewhere right actor of our film is here this is the first image we can see in second image second image did appear right in how much second 114 second so now do one thing keep the heroine also here right in the second image now our retina has kept this image of the hero right for how much time 1 by 16 before retina forgets this image we got the second image here right so what we actually see that this is not the second image but we got the movie something like that heroine is entering into the frame right or, or movie she is walking or whatever you want to do on that right so we are not actually watching the movies we are actually watching the flowing pictures or flowing images like that okay so this is an important concept to remember that retina our human eyes retina can um, retain the image for 1 by 16th of the second okay so one more thing we should remember about this uh, human eye is that um, this is the it is called as distance of distinct vision distance of distinct vision means any object uh, if you want to uh, take a very close look at the object what we do right normally we try to bring it very uh, closer to us right closer to your your eye but there is a limit up to what distance you can bring it closer if you bring that object even closer to than that distance then you are not going to see that clearly right so that object for human eye is remember 25 cm so if you can keep any object at the 25 cm which is the distance right you have the six scale 
right? So measure the distance, keep the object at the 25 centimeter. You will see it very clearly. After that or before that, there will be, uh, if you reduce the distance, there will be some blur, we can say, blurness will be there, right? So this is the distance of distinct vision, okay? Then, now, obviously these eyes, so uh, nowadays so uh, in our digital world, we are spending a lot of time on mobiles and laptops and right, right? Therefore, actually we are getting the specs and et cetera, and et cetera. So it is important that how to take care of the eyes. That's also important part, okay? So very serious thing I'm going to say, right? Take, obviously you should take care of your eyes and how to take the care of your eye for that. If doctor prescribes, obviously use the spectacles. Use spectacles and then Avoid powerful sunlight, powerful sunlight, right? In most of the, in uh, afternoon time, sunlight is very, very harsh, we can say, very powerful, right? So normally what we do, we normally wear the sunglasses there. Right? So don't try, don't look at the sun directly, we can say. Then remember this one, never rub your eyes. Right? We have the habit to rub our eyes when we woke up. From the sleep, right? But remember that never rub your eyes. Then wash the eyes by clean water, clean water frequently, right? So do these things, okay? Then um, Use our normal distances. Don't take the close objects very close to each other, etc. Right? Then don't. Obviously, this is a very important thing nowadays. Don't spend much time on screen, right? On mobile or laptop or TV. And this is the way parents always do say this thing, right? That's not the new thing for us. We don't spend a lot of time in our mobile. Nowadays, we spend almost uh, half day on the mobile screen, right? It is not very good idea. Okay. So, so this is how we can uh, take the care of our eyes. Then. Now, let's see uh, what, the de what are the defects on the eye and uh, how we can solve those problems, right? So there's our human eye, right? Spherical something. And I say this part, outer part is what? Outer part is retina, okay? And uh, yes, you can see this colored part is iris or iris, right? This black part, what we can call this as? Oh, this is our, oh, pupil, right? Or this is the actual lens. There's the opening in the iris and then after that we have the lens. Okay. And in front cover will be called as cornea. Okay. okay. So what is the job of this lens? Right. This lens actually projects uh, the whatever image they are getting. Let's say this is tree. Okay. Project this tree in, onto the retina. Okay. So for the normal eye, normal eye means uh, people who do not have specs. What is happening in that case? If this is the lens, this lens is going to uh, project the image exactly on the retina for the normal eye, which do not, uh, people who do not use the specs. Okay. So when we say there is a defect, we have to use the specs. What is the meaning of that? Let's see. So you're going to see two things or two defects in our eyes. Okay. First one is called as hypermetropia. Hypermetropia means they have written there long sightedness. Long sightedness means long means far away objects. Sightedness means we can see the long objects or distant objects. So let me make very clear here. In hypermetropia, those guys who have the hypermetropia can see the distant objects. clearly right 
and one more thing i can add here cannot see the nearer objects long sighted lens means they can see the uh, objects which are at some uh, high distances we can say not i am not saying like the they can see the planets with their own eyes it are not like that right normal vision so normal eye what normal eye can see they can also see but objects which are at the some distance we can see right like a tree on the road etc etc those we can see so this is called as hypermetropia what is happening in that hypermetropia is actually now consider uh, this is our normal eyeball right what happens in this case if this is the normal eyeball this eyeball gets or uh, we can say flatten like this right so if this is the original shape this becomes something like this right so if this is the lens what will happen in this case if the it gets flattened a little bit then this lens will produce the image at this point it is not changed right but the ball has flattened like this okay so what happens in this case if the ball is flattened whatever image uh, or uh, intersecting point we can say due to that image or uh, that that lens is getting out of the no uh, okay we can say outside of the retina no no out of the our eyes but let's say little bit away right so this diagram will show it clearly now you can see that so uh, that eyeball is flattened from this uh, vertical distance we can see right therefore the rays are meeting behind the retina right so what is the condition for the human eye that rays should meet at the retina then only we are going to get clear picture because the that uh, now is connected to your retina which is going to transfer the image to the brain so the brain will process now what is happening in this case that uh, rays are meeting behind the retina so that optic nerve is not going to uh, not able to uh, process those image right okay so this is called as hypermetropia and how to solve this one for that we can use this by convex lens right so is that mean that we should take the lens everywhere to see the objects no lens means what spectacles so we use the spectacles right okay so spectacles are huh? like this so obviously we know that the uh, spectacles have the positive number negative number if you do remember right uh, they have number 1 or 2 power now uh, maybe call them out right so even for my specs right for my normal eye uh, i cannot see the distant object i can see the nearer objects very clearly so you can see here hypermetropia nearer objects we can easily see i cannot see the distant object they get little bit of blur right therefore i am using this spec right what this spec is doing this spec is made up of biconvex lens right so they are actually gathering the rays little bit of uh, earlier we can say right and uh, our actual human eyes lens is now uh, needs this rays to be on the retina it was going beyond the retina so this lens is uh, letting those rays to meet earlier right little bit of earlier we can say so that will be exact on the retina now so we can see that yes now we can see the objects right so how uh, to decide which biconvex lens to use when you go to the doctor for the eye checkup what they do there is a very uh, table of the numbers or letters or there right and they will ask you that they will put the different lenses in front of you they have the bigger that something specs like shape or uh, you can say specs right they can put the insert the lenses different lenses in there, right so they put the lenses and ask you which by which lens you can see the exact object right object or the letters or the numbers etc etc so once you once you say that yeah we are using this lens we can see the object that is prescribes you that numbers lens right the very simple process you can say that. and that lens is going to create the uh, objects on your retina now okay so remember hypermetropia uh, hypermetropia means what long sightedness we can see the distant object clearly but uh, uh we cannot see the nearer objects right okay so a little bit of different we can see the distant object 
clearly and we cannot see the nearer object. Okay. Mm, okay. So I think I changed the uh, example a little bit. Yes. Yeah, I can. I cannot see the distant object. I can see the nearer object, right? So I don't have hypermetropia. Right? Hypermetropia means we can see the distant object clearly and not the nearer object. Right? What I can see? No, my, my personal experience, I cannot see the distant object clearly. They are blurred, right? But I can see the nearer objects. So I have the myopia, our next defect, we can say, right? Not hypermetropia. Okay. So let's talk about the myopia, nearsightedness. Nearsighted means, means uh, let's uh, see, there are two things we should uh, remember in this case for the nearsightedness. Nearsightedness means what? We can see the near nearby objects right so we don't need the specs if uh, if you have, you have the myopia you will not need the specs to read any book or right so and one more thing i can write we cannot see distant objects clearly right so i don't need the specs you can say i don't need the specs for reading right or nearby objects and obviously we'll ask so then why you are wearing the specs now if you don't need it right for nearby objects obviously so remember whenever we are using the screen laptop mobile etc if we have the spectacles we should wear them right because they also prevent some radiations from our screen also and therefore i am using the spectacles you can say okay so what is happening in the myopia near sightedness means what obviously we can see the nearby objects we cannot see the distant objects very clearly right now let's talk about the eye now eyeball we know it is spherical now what is happening it is going to flatten from the top and bottom side like this okay so it will bigger it will be, become bigger in not this direction right so consider if this is the normal vision, mm, this eyeball will become something like this now. Okay? This distance is increasing. Okay, it is getting flattened from top and bottom. In the hypermetropia, what we have seen, it is getting flattened from left and right, so opposite sides, we can say horizontal side. Okay. okay. So, what is happening if it flattens? The length increases. So, retina is going beyond a uh, little bit away, we can say. So, whatever is the original lens, what it does now? What it does, it actually creates the image before the retina, right? And obviously we know we need that uh, image to be on the retina only. Then uh, yes, then that optic nerve will process the send the information towards the brain, right? Okay. So in this case, you can say the these rays rays coming from the objects like tree are meeting before the retina right okay so what we have to do what is the correction we need we have to use biconcave lens by concave lens here so what they do uh, convex lens we know if the image was producing uh, later than retina uh, by convex lens used to make uh, reduce the distance you can say right what by concave lens is doing they are increasing the distance right so we need this uh, rays to meet on the retina that is a little bit further away from where they are actually meeting now, right? So this biconcave lens are going to do that. And now we are going to get this image onto the retina like this. Okay, and once they get on the retina, then, then it becomes very easy to understand that uh, retina can process the image and optic nerve is going to transfer the whole information towards our brain. Okay, simple. So this is the myopia. In myopia, what happens? We can see the nearby objects. We cannot see the distant objects. Okay. So, so these are the depicts. And uh, we have completed the whole theory of this session as well as the chapter also. Right? So let's uh, see some theory concepts, theory questions on this. Okay. So there is one more thing we should know about the eyes that eyes have or that uh, retina retina have uh, some rods and cones right remember 
rods have to uh, let's, let's go back to the our image yeah so if this is the retina retina have two things two types of cells we can say right one cell is you write it here okay so this retina has two things one is rod rod cells and second one is which one rod and which one we have seen just a minute rod and cones right so rod cells and cone cells what is the job of this rod cells and cone cells cone cells um, are sensitive to brightness sensitive to brightness and rod cells remember those are sensitive to colors so what we can see rod cells actually can detect the colors and they will send the information towards the brain right and cone cells what is their job to sense the brightness okay so remember this two things also about the eyes okay so yeah so let's see which one of the following statement is correct regarding rods and cones cones can be sensitive rod rods can sense the color right we know that part this is correct what about cones cones are sensitive to bright light right so we are seeing these two things so very simple theory concept you can remember right about the rod cells and cone cells okay then yes next question is the splitting of white light into seven constituent colors is called as what they are called as in the start we have seen it is called as dispersion right which are the seven colors they could even ask you what are the which are the seven colors with pure colors right we know when you remember the with pure everything you can easily remember okay simple then person who can't see the distant object clearly distant object clearly means what uh, they have near sightedness near sightedness means they can see the near nearer objects very clearly right so they cannot see the distant object that is called as myopia and how to cure the myopia use the by concave lens very easy to understand right then hypermetropia can be corrected using which lens for hypermetropia we need the convex lens right for by myopia we need the concave lens okay so now this our answer is convex lens here very easy right? okay so this is the whole chapter we can say of the light So what we have studied in the light, if you do remember in the first session, what is the introductory part of the light we have studied? What is light? So we can see the object, right? What are the luminous object, non-luminous object, etc. Right? Then uh, in second part we studied about the plane, ah, uh, plane. We can see mirror, right? How light travels or how light is reflected, right? Then how? Ah, uh, what are the spherical mirrors? What are the uses of those? We have studied those things. we also seen in the third session about the lenses lenses which are used for for our specs right and uh, what are the uses of those formulas are also important formulas for mirror as well as lenses are important right and the image positions if you do remember remember that part very carefully right a uh, concave mirror and by concave sorry by convex lens will give you same types of same table is there so if you memorize the table for concave mirror same table you can use for the biconvex lens also right that will be useful for uh, or solving the numericals right and we also need the focus point focal lens etc then uh, whose focal length is positive whose is negative always remember that sign conventions are also important for the numericals try to solve more and more numericals on this right so that will, that will definitely uh, come into your exams also and in the last session to the session we have studied about the human eyes how it works what are the different parts of the human eye right how to take up care of the human eye right that's very important remember that part right so if you do spend a lot of time on tv or laptop or mobile obviously you are going to get some spectacles and that doesn't mean that i have spent a lot of time okay
then uh, we also know what are the defects myopia then uh, hypermetropia and how to correct those things and right? mispecs to use those things okay so this is our whole chapter on the light section and uh, okay so if you do have any queries please put post those queries on forum so i can answer them as early as i can okay so today we are going to stop here thank you very much Bye.